Welcome to this evening's meeting of the Westerville City Schools Board of Education. You can follow along on the screens in the front of the room. There will be two opportunities this evening to address the board. The first being agenda item 6.1. The first set of public comments is relative to agenda item 7.1 through 11.5. Please state the agenda items you are referencing at the beginning of your comments. The second opportunity is agenda item 12.1. There are sign-up sheets located on the table in the back of the room, and each speaker will have five minutes to address the board, and a timer will be shown on the screen. And with that, Ms. Marshall, will you please call the roll? Mr. Bell? Here. Mrs. Meyer is absent. Dr. Nestor Baker? Here. Mrs. Altman? Here. Mrs. Davidson? Here. Will you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> okay, up first this evening, and we are super excited about this. We have district highlights and recognitions, and I'd like to pass it over to Nancy and Vaughn. Oh. Well, actually, since you're there, Anne, I was just going to call you up to the podium. And since you're already there, Anne, would you introduce our principals who will introduce their students? And we're awfully proud of these young people. Sorry, that better? Yes. Okay, so we're excited to recognize our National Merit Semifinalists this evening from each of our high schools. And our students each fall take the PSAT, which is the Practice SAT, or nat slash National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test, or PSAT NMSQT, which serves as an initial screen of over 1.5 million entrants each year. In early fall, more than 16,000 students, or approximately one-third of the 50,000 top scorers, are recognized and notified that they have qualified as semifinalists. And today, we get to recognize the top scorers in our state here in our district. Uh, students are recognized tonight have opportunity to advance to the finalist standing and be considered for national merit scholarships. So tonight, I'm going to ask my um, colleagues at each high school to come up and recognize their students. So um, Ms. Sayre for Westerville Central will be first. Would you like us to come up here? Oh, yes, that would be great. Thanks. And when you recognize each student, we'll have them come up. And well, good evening, and, and thank you for taking the time to honor our students. We are very proud of them, and I just want to say congratulations to those uh, semifinalists from North and South as well. Um, tonight, we're fortunate to have two uh, National Merit semifinalists. Uh, our first is senior Rohan Mowalker, if he wants to come up. Uh, Rohan has been, uh, he's a member of Boo Radley Club, National Honor Society, Key Club. He's a four-year member of our tennis team cross-country uh, team, and he hopes to study applied math at OSU upon graduation. And next we have senior Izzy Williams. Izzy is a four-year uh, marching band member, uh, also a four-year member of our theater, president of a Spanish club, and she hopes to be a Spanish teacher, hopefully back in Westerville one day, so <laughs> undecided on where she's studying, but hopefully to be a Spanish teacher. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Yancey. President Davidson, Superintendent Kellogg, Treasurer Marshall, and members of the school board. Uh, my name is Kurt Yancey. I'm the principal at Westville North High School. It is my pleasure to be here this evening to present our 2023 National Merit Semifinalist, Miss Caroline Coe. 
Caroline is a wonderful student, athlete, and leader. She represents and has embodied all of the qualities of a Westville North warrior. Over the past four years, Caroline has excelled in the classroom while taking rigorous honors and AP classes. Currently, she holds a career cumulative weighted GPA of 4.8 and is ranked third in her class out of 362 students. Not only does she shine in the classroom, but she runs cross country and track for Westerville North. She's a member of the National Honor Society, part of the Thespian Society, and was honorable mention for the Voice of Democracy essay contest. Caroline's dream school is Northwestern University. And after she graduates from North, she hopes to earn her degree in biology and eventually go on to earn her PhD in scientific research in animal and conservation genetics. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Caroline Coe. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Mike Hensey, Principal Westville South. Thank you, Kurt, and uh, thank you to the uh, Board of Education for recognize our, recognizing our students. Um, unfortunately, both of our students from Westerville South had prior engagements and were not able to be here. Uh, our first student, Peter Stoikos, is actually only in his second year as atten attending Westerville South High School, um, still undecided on college, but is very active in our theater and music programs. Uh, we don't know where we're gonna go to school, but we think we're gonna study theater. David Stuckey um, is a student leader and is a tutor at Westerville South High School, is looking to study engineering or related science fields and is also undecided on colleges. We are very proud of both students. Um, so thank you for helping me recognize the students from Westerville South High School. And, and, I, and I did find out that both students have AP English tomorrow, and I will be presenting them with, with their awards there, and it'll be fun to barge into that class. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to call up Carrie Dennis. She will come and present uh, the master teacher designation. Sorry, Mark. No, sorry, you're not Carrie. Well, I don't know if I'll ever be Carrie. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, allowing me to the opportunity tonight to be here. I'm very excited to be a part of the recognition of one of our uh, amazing Westerville teachers, Bridget Martinez. Uh, who has recently attained the status of master teacher. Mrs. Martinez uh, is the only the 24th teacher in Westerville City Schools to attain the master teacher designation. Um, Ohio Senate Bill 2 directed the Educator Standards Board to define a master teacher in a manner that can be used uniformly by all districts across the state uh, and to adopt criteria to use in designating a person, designated person as a master teacher. So who exactly is a master teacher? According to the state of Ohio, a master teacher must clearly demonstrate excellence inside and outside of the classroom to maximize student learning. A master teacher strives for distinguished teaching and continued professional growth as specified by the Ohio standards for the teaching profession. To be designated as a master teacher in Ohio, eligible educators must provide a portfolio of evidence of five criteria as described in the Ohio standards for teaching. The portfolio is reviewed by a district team of teachers and administrators to determine that the criteria have been met. The five criteria are consistent leadership, master teachers ensure student learning and well-being by participating in decision making and initiating improvements for school change. They're leaders who empower and influence others. They engage in a variety of leadership roles and accept responsibility for the school community and the entire teaching profession. They have focused collaboration. Master teachers work with colleagues, students, families, and communities to foster relationships, share knowledge, communicate effectively and support student learning. They respond to the needs of their colleagues and their students. They must show distinguished teaching with a focus on student learning and environment. Master teachers analyze student development to, con to, sorry, to connect instruction to students' needs. 
their interests and their prior knowledge. They strive to create an environment that engages learners in inquiry, promote high levels of learning for all students, and create a culture of respect and success. The fourth criterion, distinguished teachers with a focus on content, instruction, and assessment. Master teachers have a deep and reflective understanding of the academic content that they teach. They use multiple assessments to evaluate student learning, and they inform their instruction through this. They continually reflect on student outcomes and make decisions to promote high levels of learning for all students. And lastly, continued professional growth. Master teachers engage in continuous professional development and reflection. They use multiple resources to shape the focus and goals of their professional development and create a corresponding professional plan. In reviewing each of those five criteria, I noticed that there are many dynamic verbs used to define the work of a master teacher. The words empower, influence, accept responsibility, foster, respond, analyze, promote, reflect. It's clear being a master teacher is truly about the actions of doing what is best for our students. And we're fortunate to be able to recognize Bridget for her work for all of our kids at Westerville City Schools. Please join me in recognizing Mrs. Bridget Martinez on being designated as a master teacher. Thank you. I need the resolution. <laughs> Tonight, it is my distinct honor to ask the board to motion and second and vote on a resolution that endorses the naming of the Media Center at Westerville South as the Joy Rose Media Center. I'm going to read the resolution to you before I ask you to move it so you'll know what you're moving. Whereas Joy Rose dedicated 36 years at Westerville South High School to provide opportunities for students and support their success in and out of the classroom, and whereas she joined Westerville High School in 1968 as a journalism and English teacher where she advised the student newspaper and yearbook, and whereas she made wildcat history by launching the school's first girls volleyball and basketball teams, and whereas she was also a leader among her peers by serving as president of the Westerville Education Association, and whereas she spent 20 years as an administrator at Westerville South, 11 years as an assistant principal, and nine years as principal, in which she made district history as the first female secondary principal, and whereas she helped launch the International Baccalaureate program that still thrives today, empowering students to take ownership in their own learning and helping them develop future-ready skills. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Westerville City Schools Board of Education and Superintendent recognize Joy Rose's legacy of excellence by proclaiming that the Media Center at Westerville South High School be known as the Joy Rose Media Center. Could I have a motion? The second? Second. Ms. Marshall, you want to? Yeah. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mrs. Altman? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. The resolution has passed, and I'm going to ask Joy if she would come forward. Not surprisingly, Joy has a, a little speech prepared. <laughs> but I want to say I have lost count of how many times people have come to me over the years and told me how Joy Rose helped their children. This individual student, that individual student, that individual student, so many individuals. And at the same time, Joy Rose was helping to build a system build a district that focuses on all of those students, that opens up opportunities that didn't exist before Joy Rose helped make them happen. Now you can give your speech. Okay. <laughs> Just a little thing. Thank you. Particularly to Nancy, kind of fun to work for a former student. Uh, I'm thrilled and humbled 
by this honor. Thank you to my family and to all of the people who have come. Look at all these wonderful teachers that I had the experience to work with every day. So thank you to my family, to the board, the district staff, the wonderful teachers and support staff that I've had the pleasure to work with, and the thousands of students who made my career as an educator such a joyful experience. I appreciate all more than they will ever know. To paraphrase T.S. Eliot, the very extremes and the very existence of media centers, he said libraries, he didn't know about media centers. <laughs> uh, the very effectiveness of media centers provide us the best evidence that we may have for the future. Thank you. Okay, moving on in the agenda, we have reports next. So 4.1 local report card, I'd like to welcome Scott Reeves. Thank you, and I'll also ask uh, Nick McElwain to join me and Cheryl Ruffert. We were in the back shaking hands and kissing babies trying to keep our crowd in. <laughs> but no matter what we said, we couldn't convince them to stay. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you and <laughs> good evening. President Davidson, uh, members of the board, Dr. Kellogg, and Mrs. Marshall, and I am joined by uh, Mr. McElwain and Mrs. Relford, uh, and we are excited to share with you this evening uh, the student achievement and performance ratings found in our 2022 uh, state report card that was released this fall. So if you go into our report card, you can get lost for hours in the minutia and see dizzying amounts of percentages and numbers and all of those things. Um, so we're gonna give you a high level overview of what you can see and the things that we are rated on this evening. And so some of the things that we wanna talk about is one, our educational journey from the previous few years to this point. And if you recall, in the fall of 2020, we didn't get a report card. Why? Because in mid-March of 2020, the whole world shut down, and it seemed we were living in real life the remaking of the movie's Contagion and Outbreak. Our 2021 report card 
represented the 2020-2021 school year. Remember that year? We delayed the start of school. Within just a few weeks time, we developed an entire K-12 online school that had nearly 5,000 students selected, which made it by itself one of the larger school districts in our state. We were masked, we were spaced, we were divided into cohorts A and cohorts B and every other week, the kids who did come to school only came to school every other week and were home every other week. We had an army of hands every day filling lunches, delivering lunches, handing out computers to our students. We delayed sports, we limited sports, we limited the amount of people that we allowed into our gymnasiums and our stadiums. Um, all of that, and we thought that academic year that the bottom would literally fall out. But you know what, it didn't. And we're still recovering from, and, and will for quite a long time, the mental and physical toll that that took on our staff and on our students, and we've made quite an investment in the mental health. But it didn't fall out, and so what we wanna share is the, the strides that we have made from that 2021 report card last year to this year. You will learn what's new in the report card. There are some new items in the report card and the way and the look by which we are rated are different than what you've seen in the past. And we will talk about that. We will look at each of our components and there are six of them. And we will look and explain just what they are and how we are rated if we are rated because one of them we are not rated. And we will also look at the performance rating of each component of the report card in comparison to 2021 so that you can see literally that we have get, gotten back and are getting back to the academic focus of our school district. And if there is one important takeaway that this board and our community has is that we have made significant academic strides in the last year to year and a half that we have brought our students back. So in essence, <laughs> so like the Dukes, COVID knocked us off of our feet. The health and safety of our students took our priority and all of our energy. We saw a dip in our scores during the pandemic, and you'll see that reflected in our 2021 report card, but we are rising back up. We are getting back to the central focus of our school district, and that is the teaching and learning of our students. You will see in some places significant, almost amazing uh, growth from what our students did at the end of 21 to what they did last spring as reflected. And remember, last year wasn't fully normal because we were masked until February 22nd, 2-22-22. We were masked until that day when we went mask optional. We still were mitigating spacing. We were having lunch in some places still, in classrooms and in gymnasiums. But by the end of the year, we got back to what we know and our students remember from uh, school. And so we want to show the increase by comparing 2021 to 2022. And what has come out of COVID, if anything, is the whole child, because we put so much effort and emphasis in taking care of the internal, the emotion, the mental health of our students. So just because we are going back to the academic performance of our students, we're not leaving that part. We are truly focusing on the whole child.